Mm, good morning. Today I'll be talking about spiritual bypassing. Mm, gotta get a hold of my glasses. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, getting those glasses on. I've heard about spiritual bypassing by a lot of people on YouTube. So I thought I'd talk about that. Let's see where my thoughts are taking me on that. This healing journey of mine. Ah, uh, there's some images. And then some example of spiritual bypassing include avoiding feelings of anger. Well, I don't know, you know, avoiding feelings, <laughs> a lot of spiritual bypassing, right? Avoiding feelings of anger. Uh, believing in your own spiritual superiority as a way to hide from insecurities, believing that traumatic events must serve as a learning experience. I was learning something from that when somebody was being not nice to me or abusive, whether it was verbal, psychological, financial, right? So believing as those traumatic experience when people say, oh, whoa, 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 you're embellishing there, really? All right, so let's read some more about spiritual bypassing. Believing that traumatic events must serve as a learning opportunity. So if I spanked you on the butt a thousand times throughout a year span or right, whatever that's called, scarcity mode, uh, abusive mode, right? And then, or disrespect, right? Of any kind. A learning opportunity, uh, uh, and I call them learning opportunities, but really... Let's be real now. Believing that traumatic uh, events, things that hurt our heart in one way or another, we can tap into God's word. That's fine. But we still, spiritual bypassing is pretending those traumatic events <laughs> must serve as a learning experience. Or oh, there's a silver lining behind every negative item, right? This is the beginning of spiritual bypassing. I know, I know there's a lot. Uh, spiritual, spiritually, spiritual bypassing as a defense mechanism. So, spiritual bypassing describes as... A tendency bypassing describes as a tendency to use spiritual explanation to avoid complex and complicated psychological issues. There you go. Mental health in a nutshell. Oh, all right. So I'll bring up the one from Facebook. The one that I studied under somebody else study which is really good really brought some clarity to me ah uh, there we go spiritual s p i spiritual, spiritual. bypassers D r r o m a n i Dr. Dr. Period Romani, G. I. N. Jeanette, Marie Dash Jean, Tetro. Search. Sure look for it. Because it's a really interesting one. Uh, this one was by Chris yesterday. Chris Godinez. She was mentioning about. And I said to her, thank you for bringing this reality to the table much better than pretending everything is okay. Or getting defensive mode, right? Defensive mode is about people being hurt and people being hungry, people needing, having needs. So here we go. Kanya Pasture, in her video from yesterday, 
April 23rd, Sunday, a Kenya pastor cult leader starving his fellow followers, spiritual bypassing or communicable narcissist, communicable narcissistic is a cult leader using cohesive control, telling somebody to do something one knows is unhealthy. That's evil. Uh, water challenges a woman. This was in 2007. Drank three gallons of water, including TikTok. Uh, and this includes TikTok challenges, right? Uh, uh, for to younger children about taking over the counter meds. And it's okay. Some people actually don't survive those things. Uh, be aware of wrong advice and too much of anything. Be it aware that too much of anything can be toxic anyway so thank you for it now another one with dr ramani that i posted i made notes on on march 29th and this is by dr ramani on her video the term spiritual bypassing is the idea of use utilizing utah utilizing or using spiritual beliefs or and practices as a way to circumvent real feelings, real emotions, r processing so we can process the real pain, all right? There is, this is when we really connect with ourselves. There is a real arrogance to spiritual bypassing. So the bypasser cannot be bothered with mere human feelings as they hide behind spiritual explanation uh, acknowledgement of psychological pain is a beast. It can be nice. It can be nice to run from the beast and understanding that others may also run away from the psychological pain in various ways in hard times. However, running away from the pain is a survival mode. In reality, a flight mode and the denial mode, etc. The only way out is through. With no shortcuts, all spiritual bypassers seem to think or believe the fantasy land thing, right? Obsession, maybe, or not. Maybe it's just what they were taught. Seem to think or perhaps believe there is a shortcut to the inevitable. To the inevitable. As narcissistic people would rather take shortcuts about psychological pain, modifying mental health suffering or minimizing it as the internet and social media are commodifying as they do clothes, shoes, and cosmetic. Narcissism is jumping on wellness and growth as a way to self-righteously lord it over others. Self-righteously, see? Spiritual bypassing is, say, is seeing the coward's movement or, of not facing the real pain. Pretentious or being above uncomfortable emotions, thoughts, or feelings and belief, right? Spiritual bypassing has also an invalidating element by the bypassers, often being those toxic positivity, positivity distributors in their beliefs, you can breathe, chant, mantra, meditate, or yoga yourself through anything. And if someone can't, this means there is something wrong with them. Sad. Uh -huh. And spiritual bypasser seem like they are in the perpetual state of denial. Everything is fine. Great. They have love and light in them. There is a robotic positive that uh, that they are bigger than their emotions. Spiritual bypassers do not have the ability to hear about other people's difficult situations and may tell them the hurt tell the hurt people saying you are inviting more negativity by being negative and if or if they set boundaries their views as limiting the flow of love 
Yeah. This is where the whole, oh, you're just your worst enemy talk, right? You're just negative all the time. When we get over that, right? That's spiritual bypassing. So when we start setting boundaries, I was as appropriate behavior that we believe within ourselves. We take care of our inner child and we say, you know, my natural does, says no to this. So I'm going to listen to my inner child. It has nothing to do with being childish. It has uh, something to do with honoring ourselves when we start, when we realize that, yes, I can set boundaries. So when people do that, then they're viewed as limiting the flow of love and peace and forgiveness, right? So the spiritual bypassers will send suggestions like, you need to go to, you need to go high when they go low. Basically, piling up all that responsibility for the toxic situation on the person who is not being toxic. Narcissistic people don't like negativity. Negativity, they believe it is a downer. And their tan own tantrums and abuse are negative. They believe that their tantrums is appropriate reaction to their contempt and frustration. And when others that uh, with others that spiritual bypassers with with others that spiritual bypassing uh never call contempt they never call it hate or rage or they never call it anger they never call it hurt they don't call it for what it truly is hate right uh that builds up from the hurt and the anger and the pain that's emotions the feelings so spiritual bypassing is a way of shaming others for experiencing a negative feeling or an emotional experience we toss in platitudes once again in validating comments as from the peanut gallery other feelings others feeling silence in other relationship with the spiritual bypasser so if you want to check this out, it's uh, on YouTube called Narcissistic and Toxic Positivity 101, and it's with Dr. Ramani. And of course, I added another one here on my Facebook page, How to Outspart the Doct Narcissistic. So spiritual bypassing, as you can see, can be quite... Uh, Something that we can overlook, especially when we're in a mode of fear and resentment and not really looking at our emotions. You know, that part of us, that inner child or inner children, not being cared for. <laughs> we gotta, there's a lot of hurt, wound, wound attachment from the past. This needs to be, this needs to be looked at. <laughs> uh, so I'll go back to that page where I've had spiritual bypassing, pull up a picture, uh, can we see that page? So there's so many spiritual bypassing things, information, you just put in spiritual bypassing to get more of your here I'll pull out this picture right here and keep talking so I'm gonna keep doing my steps too I just started my steps huh there we go so spiritual bypassing what is what to do instead Hmm. contemplate the troubling circumstance just contemplate I'm not saying contemplate bad behaviors but contemplate process think things through right contemplate the troubling calm circumstances identified what identify 
what you're feeling. Allow yourself to feel your emotions with mindfulness. Uh, too big or too painful. And then go forward and go practice compassion for yourself and gradually extend it to anyone else involved. And then examine the facts. Examine the facts. What do you know? What do you need more info? Do you need more info? Do you think and believe what you can, uh, but do you think and believe what can you do? And then going forward to sit, a, sit it, a, set it aside, file it under need more info, or I'm not sure, or what to do with this. Leave space for not knowing. Too complex, disturbing, or overwhelming then. Check, check in with your spirit. What guidance can you offer it? All right. So I'll keep chatting, guys. Hope you enjoy the chat. <laughs> Have a great day today. Today's Monday, April 22nd, uh, 24th. 2023. Oof. So, do you saw some of the things that I studied on as both spiritual bypassing? Ones with Chris Cadenas, YouTuber, and another one's with Dr. Romani. And it's right on, right? It's spot on. Those studies are spot on. That uh, so does it mean you shouldn't go to church? Probably not. But you know you follow your own instinct. Does it mean you should go to church? It's up to you. Should it mean you should not go? Again, it's up to you. Weigh out, weigh it out. Think things through. Contemplate that troubling sick circumstance you know and what category that does this fall under when did it become trauma bond situation when did it become enmeshment situations when the the your feelings stop you, your feelings didn't seem to matter anymore or your emotions when did that start right because as children we're all taught to express our feelings <laughs> and it's okay it's natural well i'm not saying all again sometimes uh some people right Oof. just because i was raised a certain way i can't assume everybody else was raised that way you know uh what's ACE about all the negative things we've experienced in our past that we just never talked about as <laughs> our push our emotions aside <laughs> it didn't matter right we didn't feel like we mattered but we do right we matter you matter I matter right it's not so much about the world mattering <laughs> it's about, you know, not conforming to the things of the world, right? What is that? When we conform to the things of the world, we start becoming unaware of our own complete self as a whole. W-H-W-H-O-L-E, a complete human being. <sighs> Oh, let's not minimize the trauma. Let's not minimize the hurt. Let's not minimize the grief, right? Let's not minimize the fear. Let's not minimize the resentment, right? Let's not minimize our emotions. 
You know, our emotions are not always happy, happy, happy. Our emotions are not always sad, sad, sad. There's that balance, right? Once we release that emotion, let's say we're having an exper a sad moment, we're getting in touch with that. We let it out. It may take five to 10 minutes, but we let it out. Then we get that release and then we're like, oh, I just had to work it through. Now I'm feeling so much better. I can help somebody else who needs something, right? That kind of thing, we just, empathy, when we recognize empathy in ourselves, we start wanting to apply that empathy for others. <coughs> and be aware and be open and listen without judgment, without criticism, you know? Let them have their own critical thinking patterns and what works for them. Because they have them already, they just need to explore them, right? Ooh. So spiritual bypassing. I really, uh, wow. It's when we're pretending everything's okay, <laughs> but everything is falling apart. You know, there's no real communication because we don't even know ourselves. We don't even know our feelings or values or, or anything like that, right? <laughs> but we're ready. We're running around like, you know, we can be everything to everyone. Well, none of us are God. And last time I checked, when I look in the mirror, I don't, you know, I'm not God. I'm my own person. I'm not a goddess. I'm not a god, <laughs> right? I'm a human being with real feelings. And there are days I wake up and I just, what happened to me? I was probably struggling with my breathing during my sleep or what happened to me? And really take care of that child I felt all alone, you know, at one point or another, even though I was raised in the family. <laughs> three brothers and two sisters and two parents, loving parents, loving and kind, until they were felt that they weren't loving and kind, right? The ups and downs of a relationship, <sighs> all relationships. Whew. And being a common denominator for everything that goes on and wrong in the world, that's kind of a, whew, hard position we put ourselves in, you know? Let's recognize our own humanity first. What we can handle and what we can't handle. You know? Ooh, I recognize ourselves as we truly are. There's moments we're happy, there's moments we're sad, there's moments we're mourning, grieving, and there's there's moments that we need to shift our focus from blame to healing, shift from shame to healing, shift from unforgiveness to, uh, towards yourself to forgiveness. Now, oh, when horrible things happen out there in the world, and we realize that we can't control. We real when we come in reality and contemplate the troubles, troubling circumstance. We recognize our own humanity. We can ap apologize. We can be that post of apologies for everybody. But we need to look within, right? Do some C CBT work. Whatever it is, just be real with ourselves connecting to our own essenticity. That's our true self. That's our true value. That's who we truly are, right? Each and every one. And when we feel discombobulated, right? That's feeling dysregulated, feeling out of touch, right? That's because Sometimes we're hanging on to memories from long, long ago, and we want to repeat. We find ourselves repeating those patterns that we say we would never do. <laughs> because we have self-esteem and self-worth. 
when we keep yeah, being around those people are dysregulated or discombulated and hurt and you know full of resentment full of fear for some reason it starts affecting our own feelings and sometimes we're like oh well we become desensitized desensitized as if we don't have a heart or soul we know that's not true we know we have a heart we know we have a soul right I feel like our heart has been hardened or feel our, the soul feels lost and looking for answers and you know for what's going on here why am I feeling so much hurt or why am I feeling so much anger to the point of raging what is that about right it's about inner child work like less love or inner child and say you know what yes I recognize somebody wasn't there for you when you for, were feeling wounded but I'm here for you I got you I got your back right to yourself and that's uh, pretty powerful Whew. I'm doing my walk moving my legs talking oh, yeah I heard a, a story about a woman who over drank three gallons of water just reading that off it's like 2007 this lady by the name Jennifer and she just it just in one setting without going to the bathroom that's a ooh, scaredy, scarcity moment there. You know, when somebody says drink water and, and do your exercise. <laughs> it's not about drinking three gallons of water. It's about a cup or two. For me, I could drink up to four cups as I'm doing my exercise throughout throughout the day. But success throughout a day, what's... what's Drinking water in moderation, right? Uh, eating food in moderation. Uh, now, if you're barely eating food, you got to get back into that moderation, right? To build up your strength. To build up that strength in your body, you know? And for people who overeat, sometimes it's not about judging other people. Sometimes that comes from a place of feeling starved at one time, feeling so hungry and going without for so long. You just start putting food in your mouth. Oop. I'm not saying you, <laughs> per se, just a person who's experiencing, uh, maybe experiencing an eating disorder. And then another person looking at that person, oh, she's got no manners, she's got no self-respect. Actually, <laughs> he was starved. While she was busy going to school and making sure everybody else was happy inside she was starving her emotions were not attended to her whole being right so or his we gotta take that in consideration and not shame them not body shame anyone shaming again what is that it's not connecting to self-love self-respect somewhere along the way this got all discombulated so just saying sometimes there's good times and then sometimes there's hard times and the struggles keep coming keep piling up keep piling up so yes check in with your own spirit what guidance it can offer you the your own spirit can offer you your own guide right Oof. and it's good to listen to others who are t in touch with their own spirits and listen and not judge if somebody becomes over offensive well maybe they just need some time alone if somebody becomes over defensive maybe they just need some time alone uh you know let them have that time to themselves and then when you come back together with that person like oh how are you today huh doing great how about you but again if it's built on pretenses 
foundation is not there yet. We've got to build up our own foundation with our relationship with ourselves, with the self. Is the self even there when that happened? Was the self even aware that when that happened? Was the self even present when this happened? Present, you know, past, present. Or if you're visualizing for uh, planning for the future, is the self present, right? So, reality. <laughs> so, a lot of the spiritual bypassing is about fantasy, right? Oh, don't worry. So and so will cover it. <laughs> oh, I volunteer her. She doesn't know, but I did this for her. It's good for her to get out and meet people. Or the same way with the man, right? Oh, don't worry. He, he'll do anything. That's just how nice of a guy he is. <laughs> we don't even check with that person. <laughs> we just assume. <laughs> That's what assumption is, right? So what's, what's validating someone and what's overstepping on someone's? Uh, you know, boundary. We're assuming that they'll do the same thing they did 10 years ago or 20 years ago. We're signing them up for something that they don't want to be signed up for. Right? That's not fair to them. Oof. Let's be realistic. And that's what it is. When we learn about things that are not helpful or not the uh, the approach is not a, you know not helpful towards healing or not a helpful towards acknowledging huh? I just everything's okay I, I don't want you to think I'm not okay I don't want to bother you I don't want to burden you right what is that about anyways it's really sad for those people in Kenya now isn't it for all the people that suffered from cult stuff. It's really, really sad. And a lot of it has to do with spiritual bypassing. Let's just pretend everything is okay, okay? And not really going to the, the places, the, the resources that may be available. <laughs> Instead of finding a way to gossip about a person, how about we find a way to help that person if they're hurt, if they're in pain? And recognize it and not say, oh, I know you're in pain and blah, 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 blah. No. Just, just use your healthy tools. You know, you have them. People don't get saved <laughs> and anointed and blessed when there's a lot of hurt within the spirit and soul of a human being. A lot of grieving, it's a process. A lot of hurt, it's a process. A lot of negativity, it's a process. If we started treating people like human beings instead of a robot, <laughs> you know, in the virtual world, everybody's okay. We're the hero and we're the, the main dude or dudette in doing these things. Or really, are we? Do we follow that guidance? Right? Some people, their guide is their spirit. Are they in touch with that? We let them be. We let them get connected to that. It's okay. That's a healthy approach. Uh, hmm. Yeah, when somebody really needs healing and you're saying, go to this church, go to that church, go to that church, go to that church, you're not treating them like a human being. They're not God. Remember them. Recognize them as a human being. You know, as much as empathy you have for yourself, as you tap into that, the more empathy you'll have for others. Not the other way around. Right? Sometimes we need to listen to somebody else who has an empathetic way about them. Listen to their point of view and say, oh, I thank you for that. Sometimes you don't have all the money in the word world, but you can say, I thank you for that message. I needed to hear that right there and then. I appreciate that. 
right? I appreciate you as a human being. Sometimes we say that because we're not sure if the person's going to be angry with us. So we say that instead of, I appreciate you, right? So think about that. <laughs> I know I appreciate people in my life. And if they don't feel appreciated, I pray for them quietly, for their healing as they open up as God's will in their life. Not God's will. You know, John 10.10 10 says, God, God comes to give us life and life more abundantly. And if you read the second part of that scripture, however, Satan comes to destroy, kill, right? Still kill and destroy. So let's not be familiar. If something seems familiar and it's all about hurt and frustration and trauma, maybe it's time to let go of that familiar spirit and really embrace ourselves the way we truly are. Let go of the negative things that we've experienced due to being a child, being a teenager, not knowing any better. It's okay to forgive ourselves, right? Oof. I used to think my friends were not that good, but I was okay because I was still a virgin for a long time. <laughs> that was my personal belief. But I was putting... I felt the need to put somebody else down in order to lift myself up. That was my insecurity. It's reality. It's real. It's, you know, shaming, right? Blaming, projecting our own insecurities onto others. That comes from a place of hurt and insecurity, uh, avoidance, if you will. If you check out attachment style, you'll learn a lot about that. It doesn't make you bad. It doesn't make you unforgiving. It just means, it just means that you need to, it's okay to take care of yourself in a good way, in a loving way, in a kind way, in a compassionate way. It's okay that you don't give away all your money to somebody else just because you want to stay connected to that person, right? It's okay to hang on to whatever, that $20 bill for yourself. Get something that you want. Not what everybody else tells you you want, you need, blah, blah, blah. Get something that you need. Is it food? Is it clothes? Right? Is it just an ice cream cone at Dairy Queen? Whatever it is. You know? Make sure you have an adult with you if you're a younger person. Oof. Just saying. <sighs> For me, when I was a kid, <laughs> going to the to the store, I only had needed twenty five cents to get a bag of chips, a bottle of pop, <laughs> and a chocolate bar. That was twenty five cents, without giving telling you my age. <laughs> it was a pretty long time ago, <sighs> right? And now a bag of chips, a chocolate bar. <laughs> And a bottle of pop is a little bit more steep unless you learn to go to a place like Buck or Two or Dollarama. There's some pretty decent, you know, you can still, good quality things. It doesn't always have to be, uh, uh, expensive. Yeah, sometimes things are not always expensive and you can still get, <laughs> What you'd like for a snack after your supper or, or lunch or on the weekend, whatever it is that you plan to use those things for, you know. <sighs> Anyways, I really talked like talking about spiritual bypassing because, like, really, now that's where cults, right? Our that's how cults are created. I'm not saying it's okay. I'm not saying I'm okay with it. What I'm saying is discernment. Knowing that, okay, oof, 
how many people in our very own churches were hungry and looking for a place to stay or looking for a decent meal or looking for some way to come out of their nightmare, right? They're like, these people are pretending everything's okay. Don't they realize this is happening out there in the world and that's happening out there in the world? Don't they realize all the bad stuff we're going through, right? Like, why are they pretending? <laughs> Don't they realize they're being deceived and lied to and manipulated, right? Because they see it in themselves. They know they're being manipulated and lied to. So it's very important that we have discernment. That we don't tell people what to do. We just focus on our own vertical relationship with God when it comes to church stuff. Not so much about the horizontal stuff. That's my personal belief. Because when we get into the horizontal stuff, we realize we're human. <laughs> we don't have millions and millions in the bank. <laughs> you know? We're still human and we got to, uh, what do you call that? Uh, have self-awareness. Be aware of domestic violence and how it happens. You know? Oh, that person seems to have a good paycheck. Maybe if I connect with him or her, I can keep on my horrible behaviors and get away with it, right? That's the way of a manipulator. And we're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and this is where trauma bond takes place. Love bomb. First, they manipulate you. And then when they get you, they think they got you. They talk down to you. And once they think they can get away with that, they want you to, they want to make sure you suffer as much as they did. That's trauma bond, right? That's uh, unhealthy, toxic relationships. We got to like let go, release ourselves. There's a song my brother I don't know if he still sings it. Please release me, let me go. Well, really, we got to sing, sing that to the narcissistic abuser, don't we? The person who's abusive, who's disrespectful, who is not connecting to healthy connections. we got to let that person go. Not because we hate them. It could be. It could be bent, built up fear and resentment. We're to the point where we're, we're not... Uh, no, 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 no. We're create boundaries. You know, con contemptuous. Oh, we don't want to be like that. Right? What if we need to heal? What if we need to heal and that person's stuck in their hurt? They need their own self validation. They need validation from others who will hear them, truly, truly hear them. Not out of manipulation, but truly, truly hear their story. Right? Oof. For me, during that decade, I kept so busy because I was hanging on to a relationship from somebody in Alberta. Ooh. If I just be a good mom and a good sister and a good daughter, <laughs> you know, just keep plugging into the church. So yes, I quit smoking, drinking, and all that unhealthy lifestyle. Uh, I felt like on my own, but guess what? <laughs> when you think you did, did it on your own, you got uh, that same pattern is going to happen over again as soon as you get into a romantic relationship. And it happens. But you don't think that way because you figure, God, I'm in church right now. You're going to connect me to people that are working towards their healing, towards their, you know, from unhealthy patterns to healthy patterns. You know, I stopped drinking, I stopped smoking, I stopped doing that foolish behavior more and more. It was cold turkey for me. For a period of a decade, so I would pray a lot. Pray. <laughs> Not knowing what I was praying for. Praying. For good to come into this, for good to come out of this, for healing to come out of this. 
for healthy connections to come out of this, you know, and let God, Spirit, be my guide, you know, Spirit of God be my guide. Whew, so, just saying, I'm not, uh, and when you hear stories about uh, a documentary about narciss communicable narcissists, it's people who use the Bible as a way to use cohesive control over them, to manipulate them, to, you know, totally be treated as a god. None of those communicable narcissists are god. <laughs> but somehow it's that influence, that power, if you will, that je ne sais quoi, that charm, right? Like a slittery snake. Did they all start thinking that they were going to save people? Probably. They all start with the good intentions? Probably. What Jim Jones, David Koresh, what was that all about? That was not about love and kindness. That was not about good and just. That was about what's in it for me. And everybody else is going to have to follow me. <laughs> right? Very selfish. Very selfish point of view if you watch documentaries on Netflix, if you have Netflix. Or sometimes it's on YouTube. Now people talk about it. Right? Just really do your research and build on your own self-accountability and self-trust and self-value. Keep building on that, cultivating yourself into that because you're worth it. You have value. You don't have to give your power away to somebody who is manipulative, who's a narcissistic abuser, whether you recognize it as that or not. All right? Just have your eyes open and your ears open. Be discernment. Somebody's being abusive towards you on an ongoing basis and you don't know who to go for help. <laughs> what I used to do is pray. <laughs> God would unchain me from these shackles, whether they were spiritual or emotional, right? Some people are in tune with God's spirit in the proper way, in the appropriate way, and then some people are not. If we don't know our own relationship, build our own relationship with ourselves, how can we truly say we love God? Right? So let go of that for a while. Just really focus on your uh, what works for you, what's cathartic for you. What's healing for you? What's appropriate? What's not appropriate? What's negotiable? What's not negotiable? What's of value to you? All right? And reshift that focus. We understand we cannot save the world, right? Because the, the Bible does say something about what's the point of using <laughs> saving the world but losing your own soul, right? What's the definition from Freud of insanity? We fit well with that scripture doing the same thing and over and over again and not getting a result, right? When we have a question, we need to write down the answer. And if we don't know the answer, put it on the I don't know file. And eventually, as you do your research, you will get the answer you're looking for. Actually, I'm going to look at that scripture right now. Uh... Save. A. V. E. Space. T. A. E. Space. W. H. Whole. World. W. O. World. Okay, there we go. Matthew 16, 26. So that's Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. What will it profit a man or a woman, right, or a human being, if they gain the whole world 
right? What does the Bible say about losing your soul? For, for what shall it profit a man or a woman if he or she shall gain the whole world and lose his or her own soul? Or what shall that man give in exchange for his or her soul? Right? And King James, I used to read it from there. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Right? Whoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in these adulterous and sinful generation, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of Father with the holy angel. Now this is how I read that scripture. Does it mean that I think I ha have no sin in my life? Does it mean I don't think I have any struggles in my life? No. Uh, this is about having discernment and making healthy, healthy choices over unhealthy choices. Right? The difference between faith, believing in ourselves, and I'm trying to pull up the page here. Here we go. You know what? I'll just read it. Faith. So faith is about, and I'll also include in the link below, faith versus spiritual bypassing, okay? Faith, I trust you are good. God, even when he feels like the world is falling apart, Spiritual bypassing. I deny and twist the reality to explain away what is hard. Faith. I am struggling today. Lord, help me be kind. Help me be kind to myself. Right? And spiritual bypassing. If I prayed harder, I would feel better. Right? And then, again, faith. The Bible promises you to ask. The Bible promises you are for me. I don't always understand how. And then spiritual bypassing. The Bible provides a formula to fix all of my problems. Now faith again. I can't solve every injustice. Help me to do my part with your help. Right? What's my part? What can I do to help? And then, spiritual bypassing. I can't solve, I can't solve every injustice, so I'll pretend they don't exist. And now faith. God, I don't feel well. Help me to take step to take better care of myself. And then, Spiritual bypassing. I don't care for myself. I ask God to heal me without doing my part. See? <laughs> this is what it is, right? And now I'm going to copy the text into my Facebook because it means a lot to me. And when it does, I do something about it. I share. Oh, see, it just copied steps instead of the actual. Let's try this again. 
See if I can copy the whole share image. There we go. On my Facebook. Public and next. Just to copy it. Stay. I don't know why, but it didn't go through. Share to Share image. And I'll push it forward to Facebook News Feed Next Post. <sighs> Oof. Let's see if it posted. Don't see it anywhere. I'll just go back to my Google. It will post. <laughs> oh. oh, so Google G O. Oh. I'll just bring up the picture again. So, really, spiritual bypassing has a lot to do, to do with codependency, right? This is a symptom of codependency. Oof. It's kind of sad. But we could say spiritual bypassing forward slash codependency. Oof. It's that whole thing, if I can just... Get you to feel better, we'll be okay. <laughs> if I can, if you're okay, I'm okay. If you're smoking, I'll smoke. <laughs> if you're drinking, I'll drink. If you fall flat on your face, I'll fall flat on my face. Right? It's that whole spiritual bypassing. Ah. <sighs> If you sin, I'll sin. As long as you do it first. Whatever it may be, right? That's what we learn in peer pressure. And that's how we get into toxic relationship. <laughs> you know? If somebody says they like something and we really want to connect with that person, <laughs> and we start saying, oh, I like it too. But really, the name of the was saying, that just does not agree with my spirit. Why did I just say that? <laughs> right? Oof. Being humble doesn't mean that we're uh, idiots and stupids, right? <laughs> oh, just saying. I don't have to defend myself. That's the whole point of spiritual bypassing. As we find those fear modes, we connect to those fear modes. Right? We say, I have every reason to feel the way I feel. Yes, they're your feelings. They're you. That's what makes you you. That's what creates you, your thoughts, your feelings, your behaviors, your personality, your character. <coughs> right? That's you completely. Your complete whole self. I have to say whole with a W. Right? <coughs> So, with the scripture, what's the point of losing, winning the, the world but losing our own soul? That means, like, are we getting adequate, daily adequate sleep? Daily and at nighttime for people? Are we getting daily uh, food intake? Are we having adequate self-care, if you will? You know? Are we having adequate rest at night? Adequate food during the day? Adequate exercise? 
whatever your form of exercise is. I like mental health exercise along with my <laughs> step exercises. That's me. That is me. Being real. Oh. You know, we are not made robots. We're not made to be exactly like another human being. And we still can appreciate other people. That's what true empathy is about, right? Self-care, self-love, and self-acknowledgement. And having discernment. You know, tapping into that discernment. Is this good for me or is that not good for me? Is it me getting too upset right now a good thing or a bad thing? Right? Some people say we shouldn't use good or bad. That's their preference. Like we say, we shouldn't say he or she. Again, that's about preference. Right? Their preference. When they're speaking, we just say, oh, yes, and listen and be polite, right? Because that's what we were taught. You know, you be polite. And there's a lesser chance of a fighting going on or <laughs> politics taking place in a conversation where one person is competing over the other. Right? <laughs> Oof. Each and every one matters. You know? When I go for cocoa for cocoa puffs, there's a lot of young man's name or Nicholas or something similar to that. So their parents' uh, name for them is Coco in a polite way, an endearment way in the French language. So, yeah. Oof. So, and he loves Coco Puffs. <laughs> the one I'm talking about, he just loves them. And that's okay. <laughs> Oof. <sighs> Sometimes I find myself over explaining or defending or, you know, and then I think, oh, that's that spiritual bypassing thing. Or, oh, that's that codependency thing. Oh, that's that cognitive dissonance thing. That negative energy. I can release that. I can cry about it. I can laugh about it. And just release it. <laughs> you know. And release the tension on my body. You know. <sighs> the first year after my surgery, I drank a lot of water. I couldn't even swallow water. But I felt like I was drinking a lot of water, which was about a half a cup a day. I couldn't get it through my throat. I was just hurting so bad from that tube that was down my throat. It looked like a snake to me. It was a long tube, and it reached through my whole GI system to clear any uh, infection that I may have got in my body for the appendix bursting there back in September 2019. So yeah, they were doing what they knew to do at the hospital, you know. But when you, something is not familiar, <laughs> in that way, you're like, whoa, are these people here to help me? <laughs> or what? Especially if it's not explained, right? If somebody doesn't explain the procedure, what they're doing to a patient, Right? So I'm not no all knowing, guys. No, I've made my share of mistakes. <laughs> you know, I'm not putting myself above those people, neither lower either, right? I'm a human being as well as they are human beings. <sighs> Oof. How many people have fought for equality, right? fought for equality thinking somebody or believe somebody has it better than they do right it's a struggle struggle is real so and again when we tap into that empathy right what's self love about what's self compassion about what's self awareness about it is about empathy self empathy 
you know? Empathy sometimes is a walking a mile in somebody else's shoe. Yeah, but how about we walk a mile in our own shoe <laughs> and see how that works for us, <laughs> right? Just saying. You know, when we walk a mile in our own inner child or inner children's shoes, yeah? really, truly experience the experience of true emotions connecting to our real emotions. And let go more and more of the pretentious attitude or the pretending. If I can just get somebody else to love me, you know, and then wonder why the relationship is not working. <laughs> I just pretend it's still there, it's still working in your emotions because oh, it just crushed my spirit if I just let it go. <laughs> Dogmatic behavior, right? It crushed my spirit if I said we're not together anymore <laughs> right it's just sometimes common sense common logic doesn't seem to kick in doesn't register not because we're idiots or stupid of course fear would have turned that around or spiritual bypassing but we got to look at it and say oh that's that distorted mirror right I deny or twist reality to explain away what is hard. If I pray harder, I would feel better. The Bible provides a formula to fix all my problems. I can't solve every, I cannot solve every injustice, every unkind thing. Uh, right? I can't solve all the uh, every injustice and bullying in the world, so I'll pretend they don't exist. Right again, spiritual bypassing. I don't care for myself. I ask God to heal me without doing my part. Hmm, let's not practice self-care. Huh? That's all about spiritual bypassing. Let's not acknowledge our feelings or emotion. That's all about spiritual bypassing but god will come through for us <laughs> let's not plan a budget <laughs> because that's all about spiritual bypassing oh we don't have to plan a budget because auntie or uncle so-and-so is going to cover for us oh or sibling whatever no common sense right that's all spiritual bypassing uh I deny and twist the reality, twist reality to explain away my, what is hard. Why don't they love me? <laughs> Get into reality. What is it about me that comes across as a bully or a hypocrite or a liar? You know, and look within. Where's that hurt child within that needed somebody to say it's okay? I validate your emotions. I validate your feeling. You are okay. Right? Little Jeanette, little Gigi, or little Jeanette, whatever that name was that you resonated with as a child. What is it about you that needs healing right now? I can connect to that wound attachment. Right? Whoop. I pressed a button on my phone <laughs> and my steps. Oof. It's okay to check in with yourself, do a reality check. Somebody else called it something else, but it's like, yeah, it's okay. Am I in a moment of red light? <laughs> Yellow light or green light? Well, how am I feeling it in my body? Where in my body do I feel it? Right? Oof. Uh, 6,000. Go to Google.
Google. G. Oh. Spiritual bypassing. Very interesting subject. Another one. Spiritual bypassing. Beware of these 10 types. The optimistic bypass. The aggrandizement bypass. Grandiose, right? Uh, three. The victim bypass. Four. The psychonut psycho and a u t bypass the horrible the horoscope bypass the saint none of us are saints right the horoscope bypass the saint bypass the spiritual guide bypass the prayer bypass the guru bypass the finger pointing bypass so let's be aware of these by these spiritual bypass bypassing behaviors, right? Let's see if I can find more on bypassing. There we go. Spiritual bypassing is actually the body's defense mechanism. It's about using spiritual ideas to run away from unresolved issues. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> unresolved issues. So spiritual bypassing prohibits to express emotions. You know, you're being stopped from expressing your own emotions. Uh, don't feel pain. <laughs> they just don't feel pain. They numb it. They, they don't acknowledge it. Uh, spiritual bypassing. Experiencing nervousness, anxiety attacks, stress. Experiences nervousness, anxiety attacks, stress. Now, spiritual bypassing versus spirituality. Now, let's start with the first one again. Pro- Spiritual bypassing prohibits to express, prohibition of expressing your feelings. Spirituality now, versus spirituality, emphasizes to express emotions. Uh, spiritual bypassing, don't feel pain, as they don't acknowledge it. <laughs> spirituality acknowledges the pain and learn to control the emotions. Uh, Regulation, right, of the emotions. Uh, spiritual bypassing experiences nervousness and anxiety attacks, stress. Now, spirituality, calmness is the virtue of practicing spirituality, right? Uh, ways to stop spiritual bypassing. Acknowledge your weakness. Take feedback. It's okay to receive feedback. Face your emotions and pain. Have an honest chat with yourself. I think that's pretty awesome. <laughs> you know, just to get in touch and in tune with our own reality. And not accuse, and not shame, and not blame. Let it go as you heal. Right? Being real with yourself, it takes time. Just like you would take care of a patient or a sick, a sick family member, you got to do that for yourself. <laughs> How can we tap into helping others heal if we are not tapping and healing ourselves? How we, can we tap into helping others prosper if we ourselves are not tapped into pro prospering ourselves? How can we tap into helping others if we're not tapped in on 
how to help ourselves, right? So very important. It's not, it's, you know, that part is about doubt, but those, that doubt needs to be a seed of uh, faith. And again, what is faith? It's okay to express your emotions. It's okay to feel the pain as we acknowledge it. It's okay to experience those nervousness, at panic attacks, stress attacks. However, it's okay to release it. Right? We experience that in spiritual bypassing. But it's okay to release it for calmness, patience, understanding of ourselves. Right? Self-compassion, self-empathy is a virtue of practicing true spirituality. Oof. Another post under spiritual bypassing. Oof. Emotional health. A part of me feels sad today. I'm curious what that's about. And then spiritual bypassing is, you don't need to be sad. God has given you so much. Right? And then emotional health. I feel so angry at him or her. I don't want to take to act out of anger, but I want to understand where this is coming from. And then spiritual bypassing. As ask God to take your anger away, to help you release him. Put it into his hands, right? And then emotional health. I want to forgive, but my heart is far from it. I'm going to talk to someone honestly about the struggle. That's emotional health. All right. And then spiritual bypassing. God forgave you, so you should forgive others. Just turn the other cheek. All right. And... E emotional health. I am. There we go. Where is that now? I'm trying to make it so I can read it. I am fearful of what they might think of me. I want to understand that fear so it doesn't rule me. And then spiritual bypassing. Starve your fear. It's the, it's the enemy of your faith. <laughs> so there we go. I'll post that one in my Facebook. Oof. So how many of you resonate with that? I know I do. Right? G. G delete. D. D delete. D. D delete. F. It doesn't mean it's hate. It actually means that's, it's not, un hate is unhealthy love, right? Um, as I was reading earlier there. But really, that's about spiritual bypassing. Healthy love is our emotional health or emotional well-being, which creates an, uh, a physical well-being as well as we tap into that emotional wellness. Uh, There we go. And I even put the link in that post. Allison Cook, PhD. And there we go. I'll post that. That text came through. Yeah, it's so good to learn from others and sometimes adapt those things into our own mindset. It's like adopt, adopting a, 
a pet or a child, right? You're just like, apprivoiser, comme on dit in French. It's about adapting a concept that resonates with us, <coughs> resonates with the person who's doing the study. Uh, yeah, so in this case, I just posted emotional health. A part of me feels sad today. I'm curious about what that is. I feel so angry at him. I don't want to act out in anger, out, out of anger, but I do want to understand where this is coming from. I want to forgive, but my heart is far from it. I'm going to talk to someone honestly about this struggle. I'm fearful of what they might think of me. I want to understand. The fe that fear so it doesn't rule me it doesn't have domination over me right uh, spiritual bypassing you don't need to be sad God has given you so much <laughs> ask God to take your anger away God forgave you so you should forgive others just turn the other cheek starve your fear it's the enemy of your faith <laughs> It's all about spiritual bypassing, little quotes that we picked up along the way that was working for others, perhaps. Wasn't it not working for me? <laughs> Let's find out what works for us. Each and every individual. What may work for you, if you're a man, may not work for your wife. And if, if you're a woman, what may work for you may not work for your husband. And that's okay. Or your grown children, vice versa. You know, put the name of the person saying, well, it works for them, but it's not working for me. Then find out what works for you, right? Uh, this post was from, is from Dr. Allison Cook. So I like that. And that I can copy it. Cool. So I'll go back to Google. G. Oh. Spiritual bypassing. So some of these we can copy. Mm. It says select. Copy text. There's another one I can copy. Cool. Copy. And then I go to Facebook and I copy another one. Whew. Pretty cool. And this one I just copied that I previously read. I'm going to go over it so I can see it clearer now on <laughs> black and white. There we go. Spiritual bypassing is actually the body's defense mechanism. It is about using spiritual ideas to un run away from unresolved issues. Spiritual bypassing versus spirituality prohibits uh, one or many to to express emotions don't feel pain as they don't acknowledge it <laughs> experiences nervousness anxiety attack stress emphasis emphasizes on to express emotions acknowledges the pain and learn to control the emotions calmness is the virtue of practicing spirituality Ways to stop spiritual bypassing. Acknowledge your weakness. Take feedback. Face your emotions and pains. Have an honest chat with yourself. And this came, this post was, is from The Mindful, All Rights Reserved, deserve, designed by Freepik, The Mindful. Mindful. There we go. Now let's go back. To Google. G. Oh. As I look at the previous ones that I uh, looked at, didn't realize I could copy the text. I'm learning something new. So here, copy the text. Go back to Facebook. Oop. 
And this one I'll read again. Because I can see it better now. Uh, post. Oh, that one's a du du duplicate. They're saying it's duplicated. Oh, it is. Okay, so I'll just copy the text here. Ooh. Keep my steps going. Enter, Enter delete. delete. So I'll go back to the I guess I already copied this one, so let's go to the mech image before that. There we go. Copy. And that one, I can go to the post that has a copy of the image, and I'll write in the writing. So this one, spiritual bypassing is actually the body's defense. Okay, mm I already read that one. This one, faith, I trust you're good. God, even when it feels like the world is falling apart. I am struggling today, Lord. Help me be kind to myself. The Bible promises you are for me. I don't always understand how. I can solve every injustice or every unkind thing or every disrespectful things or hurtful things or little tea trauma, big tea trauma, little hurts over big hurts, right? Wars, things that horrible things that have happened in the world, right? Help me do my part with your help. God, I don't feel well. Help me take steps to take care of myself. Now, spiritual bypassing is I deny or twist the reality. Oh, no, God, I don't have any pain. <laughs> oh, no, God, I don't have any need. So, because we don't want to impose, we don't want to burden people, right? So we start denying and twist the reality to explain away what is really truly hard what is truly a struggle right if i prayed harder i would feel better the bible provides a formula to fix all my problems <sighs> like f like for example <laughs> fast and pray fast and pray did god call us to starve ourselves no no that's spiritual bypassing now there's a time to fast and pray but it's not all year round or four or five days in a row, this is uh, dysregulation. This is inappropriate. This is unhealthy, right? Or the other way around, where you just keep putting food in your mouth because you experience being hungry at one point or another and you remember that like it was yesterday, right? So, anyways, that's a struggle. The Bible provides a formula to fix all my problems. Oh, yeah. So spiritual bypassing, right? That's what it is. If I prayed harder, <laughs> my health would be better. I wouldn't have so many health problems or financial problems. If I prayed harder, I wouldn't be so dysregulated or so snappy. If I prayed harder, I wouldn't have any fear or anxiety. If I prayed harder, I wouldn't be stressed full of stress in my spirit, soul, and body. If I prayed harder, I would only have healthy relationships and healthy connections. If I prayed harder, 
people would gossip about me and to spread lies about me. If I prayed harder, right? This is spiritual bypassing. Uh, I would feel better. Oof. Anyways, the Bible provides a formula to fix all of my problems, whether they be spiritual, financial, relational, psychological, <laughs> right? From toxic relationships, me being the common denominator. Huh? But he provides a f formula to fix all my problems all my illnesses, all my health problems, all my spiritual problems, all my mental health problems, all of it. <laughs> all my financial problems, right? This is uh, truly, truly, or my uh, bad relationship problems, my poor communication problems, <laughs> right? So we go on and on with the lists that are not so good about us, wondering where all this, these problems are coming from, right? So, and then another one, spiritual bypassing. I can't solve every injustice, so I'll pretend they don't exist. The only person in the room that I want to pretend that doesn't exist is a narcissistic abuser. <laughs> Because all that's his, it's all about create chaos and good people's lives, healthy people's lives, creating chaos, animosity, and hurt, and unforgiveness, right? That's the only person I want to pretend they don't exist. Not a person. It's a spiritual war, right? It's principalities and powers. But yeah. So... I don't care for myself. I don't care if I eat. I don't care if I put clothes on. I don't care if I shower. I don't care if I brush my teeth. I don't care if I go to school. I don't care. If I meet up with my friends, my, my family, I don't care. Right? This is the attitude of hurt. Hurt. And I ask God to help me. I say, God, could you help me with this? <laughs> Just talk to God. You know, that, <laughs> that vertical relationship. God, you can help me with this. <laughs> God, you can help me with this. Just that horizontal relationship, right? Not the horizontal, the vertical relationship. Right? But what is the cross about? Right? Without Jesus on the crucifixion, it's about... It's about being open to hearing somebody else's pain and hearing their hurt, and knowing what we can do about it and what we cannot do about it, right? That's about our serenity, serenity prayer. It's about sanity. Let's keep our lives in check. Let's keep checking on ourselves every once in a while and say, how are you doing today? We can say, how are you doing to everybody in the world? But truly, how are you doing today? That's just about sanity, right? Ooh. So I'm posting these to my Facebook so you can see that I am studying. <laughs> I'm doing my best, you know. So as we learn these definitions and terminologies, we're like, huh, <laughs> oh, is that how I come across? You know, I can say, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, Lord. <laughs> but yet I just am disrespectful of myself or others I gotta work on my own relationship with myself right I gotta stay in tune with what's real and what's not real what's fantasy limerence obsession compare and crushes compared to what is real <laughs> Oof. anyways you know if we expect to, uh, for a partner to brush their teeth every day, shower, uh, you know, practice self-care, or we're not doing it for ourselves, <laughs> be like, okay, it's like God, <laughs> you know, I pray to you, but I'm not going to do my part. <laughs> we got to do our part. 
is called accountability, self-trust, building our own self-worth and value, right? Uh, so what else here? I think I went through most of them. Oh, this one. Copy the text. Select the text. The whole text. And copy. Put that in my Facebook again. They will all go to my under my list and fears of resentment post. So I'll probably fears resentment the spiritual bypassing. Right? The fears the resentment. Oof. And that one. Spiritual bypassing. Beware of the ten types. Of these ten types. The optimistic bypass. Oh, everything's awesome. <laughs> the aggrandizement. Grandiose bypass. It's like, oh, that's a superior thing. <laughs> Coercive of control. Beware. And the victim pipe ass. Oh, you don't know how hard my life is. Meanwhile, they're like waiting. Those people, they're waiting on the side of the highway for my money. And they ended up having a bigger check than you did. Working <laughs> through the whole year. Two weeks full of hard work that you earned for yourself or your spouse did the same thing. And then you're giving away that money. To a complete stranger, because we're supposed to give unto others as we give unto Jesus. Right? That's spiritual bypassing. Think of yourself. Because <laughs> those people are not thinking of you, are they? No. They're thinking of you because you're their supply. The narcissistic supply, right? So another one. <sighs> Thy sci psycho nut. Oh, I think I got it. <laughs> psycho nut bypass. Up and down. <sighs> Passive aggressive. One day awesome, the next one day they love you, the next they don't. Yeah, that kind of that psycho nut bias. <laughs> I like I got it now. The horoscope bypass. Oh, you were born born in this month. This is mean you're psychic bypass, right? You were born that that means this and that means that. <sighs> I got it all figured out, man. I got this code through the horoscope. horoscope. <laughs> Let's be aware. And another one, the saint bypass. This is I am holier than thou attitude. I can do anything I can, you can do, I can do better. Right? Not very nice. Again, that's under the line of unjust and unkind. Uh, another one, the spirit guide pipe bypass. I'm so spiritual, I will, your mother is not that great anyway, so I'll be your spiritual mother. <laughs> or your father is not really a good father, so I'll be your spiritual father. Like, really? <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah. It could also go under the communicable narcissistic or the uh, grandiose <laughs> superior bypass uh, another one the prayer bypass now prayer everybody loves to pray but most people love to pray when they realize their shink is going down and the ship is going down like the titanic right that's when people get into prayer mode otherwise <laughs> why should i pray today Every i got everything i wanted <laughs> right, that's the prayer bypass from manipulation point of view, not from a true, true, right? They're called fake prayers. Uh, another one, the guru pipe bypass. 
when they tell you your life's going to be awesome, and all they're doing is looking for salvation themselves. But they just don't know how to do it, so they put on a show. And another one, the finger pointing pipe fast. For every finger we point at somebody in a negative connotation, remember three are coming back at us. Every triggers that we're trying to put into other people's lives, three more coming our way. So if you're experiencing a, <laughs> uh, spiritual problems, health problems, uh, financial problems, relationship problems, maybe it's time to truly repent, right? Truly, truly repent from the coercive control, which is all about spiritual bypassing. Oh, I'm only at 7,500 and I'm already at an hour and a half of chat, I think. Ooh. An hour and a half, an hour and 40 minutes. So, kiddos, <laughs> grown ups, men and women, men of God, women of God, or just simple men and women, just simply put, and, you know, wherever you're at in life, may God bless you. Have a great day. God bless.